Hello and a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Grade Up. I hope you all are doing really well. Uh, do let me know if you can see the presentation and my voice is audible to you. I will also check it at my end. So I hope you're able to hear me properly. Uh, Great, absolutely. I think you can hear me properly. All right. So let's quickly start. We've got Prabhat. Hi, Prabhat. There's Sana, there's Sushmita, Ritu, Kajan, Swati, Suman, Madhavi, Lidhi. Good evening, everyone. Definitely Swati. I'll make a note of this. So Swati is requesting for a, a class on writing research proposal. I think that's very important because at the end of the day, why are we studying or preparing for UGC net is to either get into research or to become a professor and for both research is very important for your lectures that you're preparing there will be proper research that you have to follow proper protocols that you have to use and of course writing a research proposal is ultimately the goal of our learning right how do we put across put forth the knowledge that we've learned so i think that's a very good point uh swati i will make a i'll take a note of this and we'll definitely get one session organized on writing research proposal i think that's a very good idea okay writing research proposal and this will also help you with your net both for paper one and paper two because you have research aptitude in paper one and you're also having methods of research in english as a part of your unit for the net syllabus they have purposely added this because they also want you to have this empirical mindset this mindset where you're putting your knowledge to use okay so that's a very good uh, request so we'll definitely look into it Mamita is there, Suman is there, Ilum is there. Ilum, uh, Ilum Mudin, where were you yesterday? We were missing you. I think yesterday you were not there. Uh, Mamita, good evening. To uh, we've got Toiba. That's such a beautiful name, Toiba. Huh? Ritu, Shabana, Tenzing. So I welcome all the students who joined us uh, through the Grader platform, the Classroom app platform, as well as you, uh, YouTube. Let's quickly start. I will share the PDF of the crash course right after this class. I hope you've got your German writer's uh, uh, PDF that I sent last night. I will also send across yesterday's British literature notes to you. Okay, so we are looking at the crash course uh, on uh, British literature. We are analyzing Britlet. And yesterday, we started with the renaissance topic and we discussed about what is renaissance what are the important aspects of this period we spoke about how this is marking a departure from your uh, erstwhile period where you had the middle ages how this is a period of religious harmony in england especially under queen elizabeth we also discussed about reformation humanism we discussed about how there is a spirit of exploration and the entire notion of Renaissance man, which is seen in the characters of Walter Relic, Philip Sidney. So all those were important things that we discussed and we started looking at Sir Philip Sidney's account. Okay, Now, as a custom, uh, whenever we are studying Britlet, uh, because there was a gap yes, in yesterday's class, therefore I didn't take a quiz, but we'll start with your quiz first. Okay, So very, very quickly, let's quickly start with today's session with a quiz and then We'll continue from that. And in today's class, we've already covered Sydney. We will cover Spencer and we will get on to university wits, a very important topic. University wits or pre-Shakespearean drama. One very important person, Christopher Marlowe, comes without fail, right? Christopher Marlowe is one of the must-read writers that you have. And the works are beautiful. He's writing all tragedies and he is uh, writing one-man tragedy, right? So a tragedy of a single person, he's dealing with that properly. He's getting common people as well. He's talking about the contemporary times 
and therefore many people also say that had Christopher Marlowe lived longer than William Shakespeare he would have definitely surpassed him okay all right let's quickly start with the quiz we are starting it with a brief quiz there are some questions that will be coming in front of you and very quickly I want you all to answer those questions okay the first question uh, this is uh, not related to Philip Sidney this is the only question that is not related to Philip Sidney rest all the questions I have taken are from Philip Sidney only okay cover her face mine eyes dazzle she died young who said these lines who is the person who's talking uh, uh, who's speaking these lines Yes, Suman. Suman has asked a very good question. How do we select a topic for research? Predominantly, if you're looking at PhD uh, these days, a couple of universities have specified uh, you have to go through their websites, particularly uh, who are the professors who are currently available as guides, how many seats are available, and you have to look at the expertise of those professors. So we'll discuss everything. I've taken a note. We will talk about writing research proposal very soon in a video. Okay, so don't worry. All right. Yes, very good. Sneha Prasad is absolutely right. This is Ferdinand in the Duchess of Malfi. Duchess of Malfi is one of the must-read works that we've got because it's representative of Jacobian drama. So here we have Webster's tragedy wherein we have a Machiavellian character called Bosola also. But these lines have been spoken by Ferdinand who is there in Duchess of Malfi, right? Duchess of Malfi as well as White Devil. These two have to be on your fingertips and we'll discuss them also uh, via the course of these video lectures so you don't have to worry too much okay let's quickly start with the remaining questions sydney was a who was sydney when we talk about sydney who was sydney how would you like to very good very good the first question all of you have given the correct answer who was sydney quickly very very quickly who was sydney yes who was sydney so if you talk about Sydney, remember we discussed that Sydney was a poet, he was a soldier, he was a diplomat. He was the person who was patron of Spencer. He only introduced Spencer to Queen Elizabeth. So he was a part of the elite society as well. He was wearing multiple hats and that's a renaissance man, multitasker. Right. So when we talk about Sydney, Sydney was a diplomat. Sydney was a soldier. Sydney was a part of the elite society. He was a poet. He was also a critic. Remember, he is one of the first few Renaissance critics that we are having. Above all, he is a great writer that we are having in the form of Arcadia that we saw that he'd written for his sister Pembroke, right? Uh, so here you need to remember that Sidney was wearing multiple hats and he's also very famously considered to be a Renaissance man. He is a person who is uh, showing his erudition, his learning, and a learned scholar is clearly a Renaissance man, okay? So this is, of course, important. Remember, what did we study? We studied Thomas Eliot. Thomas Eliot was one of your baronet writers and we said that Thomas Eliot is trying to define a gentleman. What is a Thomas Eliot's opinion about a gentleman? According to Thomas Eliot, a gentleman is a person who is not engaging in hunting, but rather is engaging in the pursuit of knowledge. This is important. So one of the important barren age writers that we are having is the predecessor of T.S. Eliot called Thomas Eliot. Thomas Eliot is responsible for the Latin English Dictionary. And Thomas Eliot is telling us about this entire concept of gentleman. He's writing the book named The Governor. He's writing the book named The Governor. How governors need to be trained. How you need to train the people who are uh, a part of the leadership positions. Just like you've got MBAs. What are MBA? MBA is basically a degree that is training your managers. Right? So do keep all these aspects in mind. This becomes important. This is crucial for all of you to remember and make connections. So Thomas Thomas Eliot was giving a definition of gentleman that continues in the Renaissance period. He says a gentleman is not a person who is given to hunting. A gentleman is a person who is well read. Because if you are well read, you can conquer the world according to Eliot. If you are well read, you could strategize and win over your enemies. Because as it is, one single person cannot win the battle. But one single person can convince the army or can figure out ways and methods to fight better. 
right so clearly we can see the renaissance man the idea of renaissance man has got linkages with thomas eliot's notion of the gentleman to sydney what is the primary reason poetry is the most important discipline so sydney says that poetry is the most remember what did we discuss for sydney poetry is better is more superior than history and philosophy so this was a question given in one of your set exams and it can come in your gate exams also that uh, which two disciplines are uh, like you know considered inferior to poetry according to philip sydney so sir philip sydney says that history as well as philosophy are inferior to poetry and why what is the reason for this superiority of poetry the reason for the superiority of poetry is what is the reason everyone very good very good sneha you can say that yes you can say that abzishan absolutely right that's also true yes swati ja you can say all of this see basically what you have to remember is that whenever all of you are absolutely right whenever you are talking about poetry poetry itself has this unique power of making right so uh, if we talk about the world the poet only has the unique power to be the maker he is the maker that we are having right and when we talk about poetry he says poetry imitates reality and can improvise the world. world poetry has got the quality of improving the world by giving an idealistic picture whatever we see in movies you know we want to imitate those same things oh the actor was wearing this the actor was having this car the actor had a lovely house we want a house is similar to that what is that we we try to imitate art and art is also indirectly imitating life it's a cyclical process so it improves the world and it has got the unique ability to make world is brass but poet is making it golden poet is having the ability to transform this into the golden uh, period altogether right and all those things are important okay let's quickly move on to the next set of question what is the color of stella's eyes what is the color of stella's eyes in astrophel and stella which is a collection of 108 sonnets based on petrarchan sonnet tradition and 11 songs what is the color of stella's eyes very quickly what is the color of stella's eyes so if we are talking about the color of stella's eyes what color uh, do we have what color is stella's eyes yes any any answers let's see who gives the quickest answer what is the color of stella's eyes very very quickly okay swati is asking is it blue okay no it's not blue uh, i'm giving you one more try very saima you are right color of her hair is blonde very good saima has given the correct answer but that is blonde is the color of her hair right blonde blonde is the color of her hair so blonde is the color of her hair but what is the color of her eyes the color of her eyes <laughs> everyone is saying blue why are you saying blue why do you think that the color of her eyes is blue Well, the color of her eyes is black. Okay, so the color of her eyes is black. So uh, it's not blue; it's black, right? And the color of the hair is blonde. The color of Stella's eyes is blue, is black, and the color of her hair is blonde. Okay, so do keep that in mind. Who is Stella modeled after? So Stella, remember, Astrophil is Sydney. Stella is who is Stella? Very quickly. very good blessings has given the correct answer blessings has given the correct answer black is absolutely correct very good blessings uh we've got Pr pratishtha shrivastava also has given the correct answer brilliant very good 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 excellent ritu chaudhary has given the correct answer penelope devery who later becomes penelope rich right penelope rich is uh, the model for stella and remember we also have a very famous character of penelope who's the wife of odysseus who's considered to be a chaste woman because she's waiting for a husband been for 20 years to come back right that is also another important uh, women in literature by the name of penelope okay what is the meaning of the word astrophil what do we mean by astrophil very good shabana has given the correct answer this is a star lover right this is a star lover and stella is the star star lover so if you remember when we are talking about victorian poetry please make connections that's the best way to learn brit lit okay so when we are talking about uh, the like you know when we 
we're talking about pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, also called the Fleshly School of Poetry. The Blessed Damosel is having an opposite story. In the Blessed Damosel, there is the angel, right? There is like, you know, uh, this girl who is not from earth but from heaven and she's trying to look at her lover on earth. So that's literally the opposite, right? So in Astrophil and Stella, Astrophil is a star lover, Stella is the star. But in The Blessed Damosel by D.G. Rossetti, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, we are having the opposite that is being done, right? And D.G. Rossetti, a very important patriarch uh, or you could say an important member of pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, right? So all those aspects are important for us, okay? So do keep that in mind. These are all important things. Let's come on to the next questions. How many sonnets are there in Astrophil and Stella? Everyone should get the correct answer. How many sonnets are there in Astrophil and Stella? Amority by Spencer is having 88 sonnets. And how many sonnets are there in Astrophil and Stella? Very, very quickly and everyone should get the correct answer. All right. You will be surprised that this question still comes in some of the set exams. And this has also come in PhD entrances. For example, the MPhil entrance at Jamia, uh, twice or thrice have given similar kind of questions on the numbering of sonnets in their entrances. So be very good. Very good. Sneha Prasad is absolutely right. Madhvi Gupta, Swati, Lidji, Manohar, Lakshmi. Very good. Right. 108 is the correct answer. That's absolutely right. Which Italian poet greatly influenced Sydney sonnets? Again, very easy question. Who is the person who is influencing the sonnets? So who is this Italian poet? Remember, we discussed this on whose uh, sonnets is it modeled on? Remember, what is the correct answer? Yes, very good. Swati has given the correct answer. It is Francisco Petrarch, right? This is Fran Francesco, Francesco Petrarch. Petrarch is the person on whom we have the sonnets that are modeled. Petrarchan sonnet is a 14-line sonnet form, lyrical poem in which there are two parts. You've got the octave and you have the sestate. Amazing. The two elements of debate in sonnet six, in song six, sorry. So the two elements that we are having that are contested in song six there are two elements and these two elements are very important there are people who've written a lot about them this is basically a beauty and music right the beauty and music are the two things beauty and music are the two things that they are talking about that is being debated right in uh, your song number six Okay, very simple question. Who does Penelope get married to? Finally, Penelope is getting married to whom? Finally. Very good, very good, very good. Yes, Utsav, that's right. Okay, who is, uh, who does Penelope marry? Very, very quickly. Who does Penelope marry? Very good, very good. Utsav has given the uh, correct answer. Good evening, Kavita. Sushmita has given the correct answer. Ilam has given the correct answer. Very good. Who does Penelope marry? Who does Penelope marry? Remember, very good, Swati. Remember, she's becoming from Penelope Devery. She's becoming Penelope Rich. So she's marrying Lord Rich. So that's absolutely the correct answer. Who? What does Astrophil compare Stella's heart to in Sonnet 12? So he's comparing Stella's heart. Uh, uh, and please remember, there was a question that had come. This is Lord Robert Rich. This is Lord Robert Rich. In one of your uh, entrances, they had given you this question. You know, these question setters are also horrible. So they had given who uh, does Penelope uh, get married to? They had written Lord Robert Rich. They had written uh, Lord George Rich. They had written Lord, in the sense they had put Lord and they had put Rich. But these things they had changed. So do remember it is Lord Robert Rich. Lord Robert Rich. Lord Robert Rich. L-R-R. -R, okay. So do keep that in mind. This is how they ask questions. They are easy questions but a little detailed oriented. So you need to have an eye for these kind of questions also. Okay. All right. What is, uh, what is uh, Astrophil compare Stella's heart to? Very good. Saima is absolutely right. Anushri is absolutely right. Geeta is also absolutely right. <coughs> Very good, very good, right. So she, her heart is basically compared to a citadel, right? Her heart is compared to a citadel, 
all right the heart is getting compared to the citadel remember courtly love tradition you are eulogizing the beloved very good what does the sun do to stella in sonnet 22 what does the sun do to stella in sonnet 22 what is the sun doing to stella in sonnet number 22 very quickly so what is the sun doing if we observe carefully what is happening to the sun what is the sun doing Uh, Ilam is asking, what is the meaning of citadel? Uh, so when you talk about citadel, citadel is basically this entire, uh, like you know, building which is there for uh, your prey, right? That is what we call. So it's basically like a kind of a, you could say like you know, it's a meeting ground where people are coming together and they're praying together for their salvation. And majority of times, a citadel is at an elevated position. The citadel that you are having is at an elevated position. So here, when you're talking about the citadel, it is. is a kind of a fortress which is at an elevated position that is a citadel all right what does the sun do to stella in sonnet number sonnet number uh, 22 Okay, so what is happening? What is happening over here? You are the sun is giving a kiss. The sun is giving a kiss to Stella. The sun is giving a kiss to Stella. What is Astrophil's primary desire in Sonnet fifty two? Right in Sonnet fifty two, what is the primary desire that is there uh, in Astrophil's mind? And this is important because remember, the courtly love tradition was also battle between platonic love and physical love. so both the things were getting contested okay pleasure pleasure Uh, Jyoti Gupta is asking. See, but she PGT ka na form they had uh, they had uh, they had also brought the notification. Some of the students had also filled the form, but then it was cancelled. But don't worry, uh, the notification should come very soon, and you should prepare uh, like you know for the PGT paper properly, so that whenever the exam is, you're all set and there's no pressure to perform, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, so over here, what is Astrophil's primary desire? So his primary desire is that of Stella's body. He is uh, wanting Stella's body, and that is the reason why you have this entire notion of platonic love. Platonic love is like you know uh, a, a form of love that is asexual in nature, and then of course you have the bodily desire or the appetites love that you are having. So in Sonnet fifty two, he is having this primary desire of Stella's body. Okay, the color of Stella's hair. We said at the beginning. I hope everyone is clear. The color of Stella's hair is blonde in color. Okay, so this is of course there. Okay, what is Sydney unable to do when writing his poetry? So when he is writing his poetry, what is he unable to do? Yes, very very quickly. What is the correct answer? What is he unable to do when he is writing poetry? Very good, Ilam. Very good, Anushree. Blonde is absolutely the correct answer. Very good, very good. So, what is Sydney unable to do when uh, when writing his poetry? Pleasure, Jyoti. Always a pleasure. See, basically, the only grouse that you know, the only complaint that Sydney has is that he is not able to copy other poets. He is not able to copy other poets. He says that you know, I don't have the art of copying other poets, right? He is not able to copy other poets. That is something that he can't do. He can't just copy other poets. He can't, like you know, uh, think and write uh, how others are believing. Whatever comes to his heart, he'll write that down. He'll pen that down. Okay. So that is an important one. Yes, he can't write. He can't copy. He can't copy at all. When he's writing poetry, he can't copy. Okay. So of course, we'll keep on looking at these quizzes again and again because you know the idea is not to demotivate you. The idea is just to see that you know you are actively preparing. You're looking at all the aspects. You're doing your homework correctly. Uh, so all those things also really matter. And in the next quiz going forward, I'll also ask you from your homework. Homework in the sense, I keep on telling you, read the pages from Rutledge. Read the pages from the Oxford Companion. So, uh, like you know, the subsequent quizzes will also have questions from there, so that you are able to test your knowledge. Okay, and very soon we'll start with daily quizzes also on the platform, the Telegram platform, as well as one important work daily. We'll like you know have one short video. 
of how you can do one important work on a daily basis okay so these are some upcoming things that we are planning for you and they'll be soon implemented okay edmund spencer again a very important person famously called as a poet's poet we had already started discussing about edmund spencer remember we said that how spencer is writing the shepherd's calendar so we had already discussed he was the first unofficial poet laureate he was patronized by spencer and then uh, he was paid patronized by sydney and then by queen elizabeth right in the fire of kilcolman castle he uh, is having almost five and a half books of the fairy queen that are burnt so all these aspects we looked at we also looked at the shepherd's calendar we also looked at the shepherd's calendar thank you devathi that's so sweet okay uh Pratishtha, it is Nirja UGC Net Paper Two, uh, and like I told you, my uh, my uh, team, like you know, all of they they've also put my photo, so you you should be able to figure that out, okay? All right. So uh, here we have we 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 had already discussed Shepherd's calendar in the previous class. We said that this is based on the Eclogues, the Virgil's Eclogues, and remember I told you that the pastoral tradition is achieving two things. One, you are able to criticize the current city. right and second you are able to highlight the virtues the innocence the pristine quality the originality that is available in the countryside okay so both those aspects are important when we are looking at the shepherd's calendar and we discussed about how there are 12 eclogues each eclogue telling you about a month of the year and these eclogues are divided into multiple themes but ultimately remember because of patronage because of patronage he has to please queen elizabeth and therefore he is praising her he praises her even in the fairy queen right the fairy queen rather is considered to be an allegory written in praise of partially queen elizabeth herself right the virgin monarch the fairy queen the brito mart uh, so called we'll just look at that okay all right now coming on to other works so he's also written mother herbert's tale mother herbert's tale is also there right these are some of the minor works that we are having and you can take a look at them also if you wish to but remember from the minor works epithelemian prothelemian that is very important colin clout is very important astrophil the elegy that he is writing on the death of sir philip sydney that is important for us right uh, the ruins of the time the name the title etc they are important you getting questions that come on it so these are some things that you have to look at okay uh, you you don't really thank you kavita thank you for sharing blessings thank you shabana thank you for sharing okay um uh ilam rather uh, ilam is asking this question that why is he called the poet laureate rather uh, spencer is not the poet laureate remember we have written spencer is the first unofficial national poet all right so when we talk about chaucer when we talk about spencer these are national poets because they're getting patronage from the queen from the monarch right but at the same time you need to remember that these are people right these are people who aren't right these are people who aren't really uh, one thing that you have to remember they're not officially sanctioned as the poet laureates for example when you talk about dryden dryden is becoming officially the poet laureate after the publication of annus mirabilis in 1667 in 1668 we see that he's appointed he's appointed in the royal uh, positions he's becoming the royal historiographer in 1671 he's becoming the poet laureate in 1668 so he is categorically getting official so he's officially appointed so he's getting pension he's getting proper uh, like you know he's getting uh, properly looked up after but having said that spencer was also looked after pretty well right where he was more like a kind of a messenger to ireland from queen elizabeth's side all right just like christopher marlowe is also considered to be a spy so many a times people consider that you know spencer was also one of the people who was just a kind of a messenger uh, for the people of ireland but unfortunately he was never proud of his irish roots unfortunately he always wanted to pretend that he was an englishman right this is a problem that post colonial critics will have with him yes absolutely absolutely present state of ireland is an important prose work that he's writing very good very good who's made this point abzishan very good point very good point okay epithelemia epithelemia is basically a marriage song okay so epithelemia this term actually means it is a marriage song 
it means a marriage song and epithalamia and prothalamian these are companion poems these are companion poems epithalamia is actually talking about his own marriage to elizabeth boyle to his own marriage to elizabeth boyle right it was printed with the amority amority his sonnet sequence the love sonnet sequence that he is having and it was printed with the amority in 1595 it was printed with the amority in 1595 and we can clearly see that the 24 stanzas in epithalamian are representing the 24 hours of the midsummer day each uh, like you know each stanza in a way is representing the hour of your midsummer day prothalamia is used to celebrate the marriage of catherine and elizabeth somerset so it is there to celebrate the marriage of catherine as well as elizabeth somerset that is something that you can keep in your mind so these are the minor poems that he is writing but at the same time they are being questioned they are being asked in your exam so you have to pay attention to these okay amority again written in imitation of francesco petrarch there it's a collection of 88 petrarchan sonnet it is telling you about his courtship of elizabeth boyle all right it's he's celebrating the progress of his love the difference between astrophil and stella and amority is astrophil and stella is about unrequited love it is unrequited love it's unfulfilled love amority is about fulfilled love right because amority is ending with epithalamia it is ending with an epithalamia 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 is a marriage song the culmination is there there is a positive culmination that the courtship the courtship is ultimately leading to the marriage of both the uh, protagonists so what you see is that the difference that is there Yes, absolutely, absolutely. That's right. Okay, so do keep that in mind that you know he is taking from his own life a uh, majority of the works that he's known for. But at the same time, remember whenever we talk about Spencer, particularly in the Fairy Queen, he's starting with the Spenserian stanza, a Spenserian stanza which is becoming so unique that people will follow it. For example, Giles Fletcher, Phineas Fletcher, the Spenserians will copy his style of writing. right a uh, spenserian stanza is a nine line stanza form which in which eight lines are written in iambic pentameter and the last ninth line called the alexandrine is written in iambic hexameter right so a spenserian sonnet and this question has been asked in your net exams twice a spenserian stanza which he uses in the fairy queen a spenserian stanza that he is using in the fairy queen is a nine line stanza form in which eight lines are written in iambic pentameter and you are having the ninth line right iambic pentameter and the ninth line that you have is written in iambic hexameter the ninth line that you have is written in iambic hexameter and this is also called as alexandrine right this is famously called as alexandrine so you have to keep this in mind that he's inventing this new stanza form for which he is becoming very popular and people uh, who are called spenserians are imitating this stanza form of writing okay so all those aspects are important oh, oh what happened sorry yeah I don't know what I did. Okay, so do keep this in mind. All right, Colin Cloud comes home again. Colin Cloud, remember he is using this figure of Colin Cloud even in the Shepherd's Calendar. He is using this figure even in the Shepherd's Calendar. This is a pastoral allegory. Spencer's first London journey and the vices inherent in the court life are presented over here right despite the fact okay so uh, you know when we look at the next age we will talk about a person called Francis Bacon right Francis Bacon is the pioneer in terms of your prose writings now Francis Bacon because he exposed the taxation policy of Queen Elizabeth he was forbidden he was forbidden to gain any uh, important role and position in the uh, in the elizabethan ministers group right that is the reason with the demise of queen elizabeth you see that francis bacon rises in power because of the fact that james the, the first is able to trust him that he was not someone who was supporting queen elizabeth okay so do remember that point that is important or really 
Abzi Shan is saying that you know he's watching me minus 11 degrees. So it's very cold over here also, Zee Shan, but it's not minus for sure. So I'm also that's the reason I'm wearing like you know something which is like a blanket only. <laughs> If you would have seen me, I, I look a little funny in this what I'm wearing. But it's so cold here in Delhi also. It's very very cold. We got the heater, and uh, I was literally in the like you know I was having a blanket around me in the morning because it was very cold. Okay. Uh, What happened? You you are not able to hear me. Ah, uh, Suman Mondal Colin Clout is actually the name, all right, that he is giving. So uh, a lot of these writers will use the characters again and again. For example, if you look at Joseph Conrad, Joseph Conrad is having the character of Marlowe repeated multiple times, right? Uh, or for example, if you look at James Fenimore Cooper, who is writing the leather stocking novels, there he has got the character of Natty Bompu, who is coming again and again. So writers have got this, I uh, like you know this entire notion where they're using one character again and again you know the say this the very famous question that in how many films shahrukh khan is called raj or uh, is called rahul so so you know the rahul becomes a prototype of the name that is given to shahrukh khan in movies similarly colin clout is a name that is being used uh, by spencer in a couple of his works Okay, so that is the thing. I hope that makes sense to everyone. It was dedicated to Walter Relic. I think one of you had asked this question in the previous class that which work is dedicated to Walter Relic? So Colin Cloud Comes Home Again is also dedicated to Walter Relic, and Walter Relic is a very important, uh, you can say, Renaissance man that we have to remember. Okay, the poem is describing in allegorical form how Relic visited Spencer in Ireland, right? And he induced him to come to England, his Cynthia to see the Queen. Okay, so Walter Relic visited Spencer in Ireland, and he said that you must come to, uh, like you know, to meet the Queen here in London. There's a charming description of the sea voyage. Right, there's a charming description of the sea voyage, obviously getting inspired by Relic. All right, and then of course, very important. Otherwise, he'll not get, you know, the payment of. Okay, and also remember that you know he was the person who ultimately dies poor. Okay, and that's the reason you've got the famous quotation: "He lived poor, and he also died poor." Uh, but he is getting this entire success in the middle, all thanks to Sydney. But he is glorifying the Queen. He's glorifying the Queen. right uh, there's of course a bitter attack on court that uh, the queen is still surviving despite the corruption in the court and ultimately we have the poem is ending with the definition of true love it is a tribute to colin's proud mistress rosalind so who is colin's mistress in colin cloud comes home again that is rosalind okay uh, okay momita is saying uh, that that in west bengal the cold is medium that's nice Pragati, it is uh, from Tuesday to Saturday. Uh, at seven o'clock, we meet on on the YouTube platform, and three o'clock and eight o'clock, we meet at the classroom platform. So you can check about both of them. All right. Okay. Then we have one of you rightly said a view of the present present state of Ireland. A view of the present state of Ireland is a prose work. You get a direct question. For example, in Uttarakhand set, there was a question that was asked. Similarly, they had given you an important poet and they had asked you the prose work. So Spencer can also come in in the same manner. So Spencer, even though he's known for uh, his poetry, but this is a prose work that he's writing. A view of the present state of Ireland. all right and please remember it's in a dialogue form remember dialogic criticism is clearly uh, a tribute to classical writers because plato and philosophers said through dialogues only you can come at true knowledge if i keep on giving you a monologue then that's not true knowledge but if we discuss a particular topic then our knowledge increases at a many fold level okay and astrophil of course is like you know the pastoral elegy that he's writing on the death of sir philip sydney these two works even though they are minor works but they can be asked as it is and you need to remember this okay a view of the present state of ireland prose work astrophil a pastoral elegy 
what are the other names of elder trees that we had discussed elder tree is also called a monody elder tree is also called a threnody remember elder tree is called a threnody elder tree is called a monody these are two names of the word elder tree these are two names that we are giving to the word elder tree okay the fairy queen a must read work the most important work that we are having over here is the fairy queen right the fairy queen is considered to be one of the three best allegories ever written you have the animal farm by george orwell we are having your bunyan's pilgrim's progress which is an allegory of ideas it's an allegory of ideas and third is spencer's fairy queen these are considered to be the three best allegories allegories are simply the works that are having a simple story but they've got a hidden parallel meaning beneath the surface you've got another story which is equally important for you to understand that is basically what we call it as an allegory okay so very important work of spencer introduces the spencerian stanza form also it is a very long it is a dense allegory it is written in an epic format it is written in an epic format so this is actually called a renaissance epic poem also in multiple books you will see that right and it is based on arthurian legends it is based on arthurian legends we only have six and a half books that are completed the first three books were published in 1590 the the second set of three books were published in 1596 that we have the spenserian stanza form eight lines in iambic pentameter and the ninth line in iambic hexameter also called the alexandrine the ninth line so there are first one to eight lines are in iambic pentameter and the ninth line that we have is in iambic hexameter this is basically an example of our spenserian stanza the introductory letter just like colin cloud comes home again is actually a letter to sir walter raleigh detailing the plan this is a very important question that is asked multiple times he is telling you the plan of his epic milton's paradise lost right or homer homeric epics they are all telling you their intention the epic is always trying to elucidate what was their ultimate objective for writing the epic so in the introductory letter to sir walter raleigh what are we able to find out we are able to find out thank you sugali that's very sweet of you okay uh, geeta very good geeta has given the correct answer it was monody very good very good i'm glad some of you are revising good 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 okay sk no momita is also from um, Uh, west bengal so you're not alone from west bengal don't worry about it okay so um and of course next week when we look at indian writers we'll have a lot of them coming from bengal right a lot of them writing from bengal so we'll look at them okay uh, so the introductory letter uh, is written right uh, to sir walter relic now fairy queen is actually trying to glorify our very important queen elizabeth right queen elizabeth is represented in figures of brit mart belfob marsilla and gloriana these are all chaste women these are all pious women these are all wonderful women and queen elizabeth is represented in these women you can get a question pick odd one out they can give you britomart they can give you marsilla they can give you gloriana and then they can give you uh, malacasta so malacasta is an evil woman but brito mart marsilla gloriana are all a uh, virtuous women who are representing queen elizabeth malacasta is like you know representing evil so they can give you pick odd one out so you need to know brito mart belfi marsilla gloriana so you have b b m g b b m g right brito mart belfi marsilla gloriana right so these are the important ones okay i love love you zindagi is like i'm from india i'm also from india okay yes um all right so do remember this this is of course important and each book is describing a, an adventure is describing a knight and that knight is representing a virtue 
so each book has got a night and each book and today this is your homework what is your homework you have to take a sheet of paper make a box i will just tell you how you have to make it before tomorrow's session all of you should have that box and you all have to i i don't ask you to learn things but i want you to at least keep this box in front of you like you know the sheet of paper i'll just tell you how you have to create this because this will help you in your multiple exams okay all right so let's just look at all the virtues so what you have to do today after this class gets over you take out a sheet of paper all right divide the sheet into three columns okay uh, divide the sheet into three columns write down the names of the books right just the books one two three four nothing else nothing else okay then you have to write down the name of the night and then you have to write down the virtue that's it nothing else you don't have to write anything so for example in book 1 you have the red cross knight the red cross knight holiness is the virtue that's it okay so this is your homework this information you have to put it in this chart format we'll start with this only i will ask you questions so this has to be done properly okay because in your uh, particularly in exams like your gate exams in your set exams in your phd entrances you get these easy brownie questions and they have to be on your fingertip okay draksha bachcha i'm giving you the pdf for all the lectures uh, i'm so sorry for the delay yesterday's uh, like i had submitted i'd shared uh, the german writers uh, handout with you today i will share yesterday's handout as well as i'll try to share this handout also so don't worry pdfs like i've told you i can give you a lot of material there is no dearth of material but the thing is the material should also go to your head and you need to learn that then we should like you know graduate to another material all right Okay. Um. Okay. Right. So everyone is asking, uh, Raksha, I'm going to give you the PDF. Don't worry. Okay. Raksha is a very sweet girl. She's she stopped telling me Hindi me padha do because she knows ki ye ma'am sinti nahi hai Hindi me padhani ke liye. I'm so sorry. You know, majority of them are asking, but sorry, Raksha, but you will get the PDFs. Don't worry. And I'm coming uh, up with something for you people also. So don't worry. Okay. So book one, we have the Red Cross Knight representing the virtue of holiness. then you have book 2 the character of knight gone who's representing temperance brito mart in book 3 is representing chastity trimund and campbell in book 4 they are representing the virtue of friendship right so uh, you know you can you can actually learn it like this htcf htcf holiness temperance chastity friendship holiness temperance chastity friendship holiness temperance chastity friendship then you have book 5 arthgal representing justice calador representing courtesy right uh, so of course allegory means that you know someone is representing something animal form you need to have those on your fingertips also so these are very important aspects that you need to be clear about okay so do remember and today only like i said you have to make this table when you go back home okay okay momita has asked a very good question see at this moment don't go into detail of anything first your idea should be for one month the basics of british literature have to be on your fingertips if anyone asks you any questions at least the basic things are very clear after one month what we can do uh, like you know what you should do is momita then pick up texts right uh, okay then you can pick up fairy queen look at it in detail one day then you can pick up uh, christopher marlowe's play you can look at it in detail you can take out a shakespearean uh, tragedy you can look at it at greater detail but first my suggestion would be for 30 days get everything on your fingertips make proper note on british literature have everything on your fingertips so that at least like you know these simple questions and they come in your net exam also are on your like you know they are in your pockets basically okay all right uh, and of course when we are talking about the influences he was influenced by aristos orlando furioso or aristos orlando furioso please remember orlando is being used by robert green orlando is also the story of virginia wool right and by tassos these are the influences on this work tassos jerusalem delivered aristos orlando furioso and tassos jerusalem delivered these are the two influences and charles lamb who's the prince of english essays right the prince of english essays is telling you that spencer is the poet's poet 
He is a poet's poet. Right? And many times you have, for example, this criticism, Lady Anne Clifford is saying, the prince of poets in his time. He is the prince of poets in his time. So this is also something that you have to keep in mind. Okay? All right. So I hope that's clear to everyone. You're clear with your homework also. Uh, this is something. Jodi, multiple sources. I uh, like you know. That's the reason I keep on telling you in your homework, make it a point that you're referring to at least two sources and also question papers. This will really help you increase your knowledge. That is very important. Okay. Let me see if any of the classroom students are also having uh, any doubts. Uh, let's just quickly. Even try to capture and cover your doubts. Uh, good evening, Rabia. Hi, Shilpa. Uh, very good. Very good. Uh, okay, some of you have written the answers. So, are there any doubts? Pooja, Pooja Dube is asking, discuss old English literature. Pooja, we've already covered. So, you just go to the playlist section on YouTube, Grade Up Net channel. And if you come on to, uh, like, you know, the crash course on British literature, parts 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, they are dealing with your old English literature. So, you can just see all the parts and details and you can collect the PDFs of those uh, units from the Telegram channel. Okay. So we've already discussed Old English literature. Watch those videos. And still, if you have problems, you can let me know. We'll organize another class for you. Okay? Okay, Tushar has asked a very good question. How do we make notes so as to revise easily in the last moments? The one suggestion would be keep all your notes in one place. Okay? That is very critical. I see people not being able to make all the notes in one area. That causes a lot of problems. So try to make all your notes. Compile all your notes at one place. That is important. Because if you have your notes at one place, it's easier to refer. Alright, uh, so at least have one copy and this copy you can then carry for your uh, exam centers also. So uh, I would say thoroughly study, you can take it video by video, cover that video on a regular basis. Make sure that you're devoting two to three hours of consistent study on a regular basis and uh, make one separate notebook for practicing five to ten questions from both paper one and paper two. That will really help you. Okay. All right. Are there any other doubts that we are having? Tushar, I hope this answers uh, your question. Uh, so, Pooja, I, I hope your question is also answered. Any other doubts that you are having, then you can let me know. So, Tushar, I've answered your doubt. Very good. I think the remaining were the questions. Oh, oh no, there was one more question. Mm, oh, oh. Okay, these questions, you know, and the app just go up and down. Anyway, um, Taslima, the name of the Telegram channel is Nature UGC Net uh, Paper 2. You'll be able to find it if you look at the Telegram and you'll be able to access it. Okay, on that note, we'll end today's class. Don't worry about the PDFs. The PDFs are coming right away. Focus on whatever we've discussed today. You're looking, going back to your Rotledge companion, going back to your Oxford companion, uh, looking at question papers on a regular basis. And then, of course, we'll discuss those in uh, the next class. Yes, of course, Neha. Uh, next week, we are actually covering uh, your Indian writers only. Uh, and also, Sneha, we already, I think, had one class on South Asian writers. Just check. I think we've probably had one class on South Asian writers. If not, then don't worry. Before your, uh, so next week itself, we'll cover your most important South Asian writers also. Okay. I don't know, something dropped. Anyway, that was scary. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, Shabana. MS set marathon also. I will fix the dates for that. Yeah. When is your MS set exactly? It's on 27th, is it? Mm. Uh, Villa Kathar is predominantly, like, you know, when you talk about Villa Kathar, uh, she's, of course, very, uh, like, you know, only popular for one like you know these are basically one novel wonders right when you talk about people like Villa Katha these are one novel wonders and uh, clearly when you're talking about Villa Katha she's of course like very famous for Maya Antonio she's famous for one of ours one of ours is also getting the Pulitzer Prize so you can study that but Maya Antonio is an important work for Villa Katha that you should study for sure in detail for your exams okay all right, uh, SK, you can go to the Telegram channel and join the Telegram group to get access to the PDFs. All right, on this note, I'll end today's class. I will see you guys. Sorry. Uh
sorry i will see you guys tomorrow and if in case there are any problems do keep me posted take care and stay warm i will see you guys tomorrow bye take care